Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. Now, a long time ago, I did one of my best performing videos. It still gets a couple hundred views every week to this day, where I was showing people how to use this cerium oxide. Now, this is a fairly low grade optical cerium oxide. So they call it optical grade, which means it's around the three, three and a half, four micron kind of size, particle size. And it was pretty good at discussing this one, but I want to expand it because I now no longer use this material. I use my super serum that I get made. I'm much happier with the results and the usage of it is a little bit different. And people keep commenting on the old video and I have to keep telling them that I've updated to something new and it works a little bit better. So feel free to check it out. So to do that, I've got four different serum oxides here. Now you'll notice that they're all a little bit different in terms of color. You won't be able to see the size, but they're also different in terms of size. And I just want to go through what you should look for and how to use each one. So if you are using something like this, the color really doesn't matter so much. The color is just the different impurities within the, within the sample. This can come from the processing, whether it's been extracted or whether it's been synthetically made. Of course, this one being the least processed and naturally produced, it's still got a lot of stuff left behind. They can go through more steps to get rid of it, but that's what makes this stuff so cheap. Very little processing, and it's just ground down to a nice little size. They'd like to go just to the optical grade. This is literally the lowest budget option you can get. Minimal processing, least amount of grinding, least amount of impurity removal. So with this stuff, I've found that what you wanna do is you wanna run it a little bit thicker than what you would normally run something like a super serum oxide little bit thicker and towards the end you want to run it till it's just about getting dry on the burr. For all of these I suggest using something like this. I've got one lying around. Little felt, felt burrs, really dense. The denser the better. You can also use leather. You can use a lot of different things. I don't recommend wood. Wood is just for diamond paste. But yeah, the strategy behind this one, running it a bit thicker and running it a little bit dry towards the end, I think that it grinds up a little bit of the powder a bit more. Now, I haven't been able to test that, but it does seem to get better results when you do it that way. So I think it's actually self-grinding itself. All of this serum oxide sits around the hardness scale at about a six. Sometimes a little bit above, sometimes a little bit below, depending on the structure and the purity. Now, this one here, this one here is actually incredibly fine. So this is more of a serum, a super serum, but you can see compared to mine, it is still very yellow. So that is purely based on impurities. And in terms of function and performance, it's not a lot different. I just find that it's a little bit less consistent and doesn't work quite as fast. I think the impurity, whatever it is, a lot of the time it's another rare earth metal, well, a rare earth metal oxide. It seems to interfere a little bit with the serum oxide, though you can get some blends that work actually better than serum oxide alone. But yeah, I'd prefer to go for a super serum, which is less than two micron, a lot of the time one micron or less. All of these, I say, run as wet as possible for the entire time, no dry. You can do a little bit of dry towards the end if you're just trying to clean out your burr and get it ready for next use. But the water actually helps with the chemical action of this material. Whereas this one, because I want to grind it up a little bit, you run it with a little bit less water and use more of the abrasive properties with opal being at about a six, it works quite well. But that's that one. And then we've got this one here. This is the closest. This is a polishing powder produced by the black lighters. And it's still a serum oxide slightly slightly more impurities it's very hard to tell a little bit more yellow but far less yellow than this one here so it has had a few more things removed out of it but still got a little bit in there and it works pretty well i was using this for quite a long time it's just the price of it was a little bit little bit high for my liking and i could find a factory to manufacture something that was tweaked a little bit more and then that leaves me with my little super serum oxide here. So like I said, teaspoon of this into a cup of water, 250 mils, mix it up each time you use it, let it settle. You can use it forever. Just add water, add powder as you go along and it will get you a great finish on any soft silica based stone. Now, when you're browsing online, you can actually get a few sneaky things. So this one, you can see, this is not a label that I put on here. This is called nano serum oxide. This I bought, as you can tell from the packaging, from the same company as this one here. Now, this nano serum oxide is not serum oxide at all. I showed this in a video when I was comparing all of these with the XRD, it's an X-ray machine that I have in the lab. This is aluminium oxide. Very similar to the aluminium oxide I produce. Now, you can't be 100% sure without the XRD to get whether this is a aluminium oxide or not. That's the only way I can confirm it. But the other thing is, if you look at the color, very, very white. 
Even a really well-produced cerium oxide, clean from most things, look at that color difference. It'll never get to white. Cerium oxide itself is not white. You can see it's still got that slight yellow tinge. It doesn't have to be like this. And because the company produces this and this, you would think they would label it correctly and not sell this as cerium oxide and sell it as aluminium oxide, which actually fetches a higher price. And the price difference between these was quite a lot compared to what you'd see in a slightly cleaned version of cerium oxide. But yeah, it was it was a little bit interesting and a bit of a surprise to find that this was not even cerium oxide because I couldn't see that color, that pure white color on the online listing. It was slightly yellow, so it looked fine. But of course, when I got it in hand, I was pretty suspicious and yeah, the lab confirmed my suspicions. So yeah, if you see anything too white and they say it's cerium oxide, you're probably getting aluminium oxide and I don't know why they would sell it as serum oxide. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I guess serum oxide is more popular for a lot of a lot of applications, specifically windshields. So yeah, I hope this video helps a little bit more in terms of understanding serum oxides going from really under-processed optical grade through to highly processed super serum grade and kind of everything in between. There are, there is a whole spectrum between all of this. So just be wary what you buy online and yeah, find what works for you. Some people still really love, really love this stuff. It gives them the finish they want. You can get a really good finish with it. I just prefer a little bit of speed and with carving, everything takes a little bit longer. If you've got a huge buffing wheel or something, this stuff works perfectly fine. But for us with the carving stuff, you really need something that's working at its like optimum rate otherwise you are you are burning time and time's our most valuable resource so on that note i'm going to keep this nice and short and sharp and i will see you in the next one where i will be carving a bunch of stones at the moment i have no idea which one's going to be released next but we will see when it gets released catch you guys